Now, other distinctive sounds that we associate with autumn are the pops, whizzes and bangs from fireworks. As the evenings draw in and the weather cools, the dark skies come alive with colour as Guy Fawkes Night is celebrated this weekend. 20 million of us will be attending a display. That's how much we love them, but for some people, they are a real passion. Greg McKenzie has been to rural Cambridgeshire to meet a rather unusual fireworks expert. Before we find out the impact of fireworks on our countryside and wildlife, I'm visiting the spiritual home of Britain's fireworks industry. Ronald Lancaster may be a priest, but the rural reverend is also responsible for some of the most spectacular firework displays the country's ever seen. What do you like about fireworks, Ron? What's your fascination with them? Fireworks have life. Fireworks have got a life of their own, of course. Yeah. And, Ron, in terms of your achievements, I mean, what are you most proud of? The Olympics. Wow. Or the London Eye. But it was a great privilege to do it as a company. In Britain, we spend around 20 million a year on personal fireworks, but one big city New Year celebration can cost millions, even though it might only last a few minutes. Basically, we're still using the old stuff, which is gunpowder. Wow. Uh, which has been around a long time. The discovery of gunpowder occurred in ancient China and was used in Chinese firecrackers to ward off evil spirits. Soon, gunpowder spread to the West to be used in warfare and, of course, the infamous gunpowder plot, which Guy Fawkes Night commemorates. But how did the practicing pastor turn master blaster? Ron learned everything he knows about pyrotechnics from his time as a chemistry teacher at the local school in Kim Bolton. A burning firework is a good example of a chemical reaction. I think chemistry would have been so much more interesting had you taught me, Ron, because <laughs> my chemistry <laughs> lessons were dull. Over the years, Ron has been inspiring many, many children with his love of chemistry and, of course, blowing things up. And today, he's helping out in a lesson with a former pupil. And that pupil, Alistair Gray, is now one of the school's current chemistry teachers. What he and Ron want to demonstrate is that even the biggest displays boil down to three key ingredients, sound, light and colour. I think I'll stand at the back. Now, what do we know about gunpowder? What do we think is going to happen? It explodes. It explodes. OK, well, should we see that, Ron? Yes. Should we see if it does explode? Well, that was the bang. But what about a firecracker's whistle? I'm going to show you this one. For this one, I think time has come for a volunteer. So, hands in the air, who would like to volunteer? Now, there's a young man at the back who I know is desperate to go back to school. Greg? Oh, I'm on, sorry, come, guys. <laughs> sorry, guys. If you put the powder in the bottom of the tube and leave the top of the tube open, it acts like an organ pipe. Just the very end of it and then just step back step towards back. me. Shouldn't this have a longer fuse? Yeah, and then, and then run, retire and run. And come back. And there you go. <laughs> I'm going to turn this off. <laughs> that was so loud. Next are fireworks colours. For over a thousand years, they were limited to yellow and orange. But as more chemical elements were discovered, the 19th century sky was aglow with reds, greens and blues. Copper produces blue. But copper only produces blue at a fairly low temperature, about 500 degrees. You can <laughs> have very low. high temperatures with us. Fairly low temperature, Greg. Only wow. 500 degrees. Only 500 degrees. Here and we then go. You can just poke at each one and let's see what happens. Oh, so there's our red. That is amazing, isn't it? Look at okay. the colours. It's so vivid. You can do the next one. Yes, this should be a green. There we go. There's our green. And the last one. Wow. <laughs> wow. And the this smoke. This one's coming towards <laughs> me. There. I'm disappearing. There's the smoke. <laughs> It's like no chemistry lesson I had at school, and using fireworks has certainly worked up the students. It was just, like, so exciting. Like, it gave you a thrill. Wow, that's good. And what about yourself? I like the screamer, you know, when it made the really loud whistle. That was scary, that was wasn't it? It was, it was so loud, but it's really yeah. cool. But as much as we love to celebrate awesome with some whizzes and bangs, what impact is it having on our countryside and wildlife? 
I'm meeting Sam Gaines from the RSPCA to find out more. How much of a problem are firework displays and kind of fireworks for our wildlife and countryside? Well, for our wildlife, we don't have any direct evidence that it does cause distress and suffering, but it's highly likely that there are going to be some wild animals and birds that are frightened by fireworks. Certainly what we would advise people to do is that if they want to set off their own fireworks and they're near a nature reserve, then don't do it. So you can get fireworks that are a lot quieter and are less likely to scare animals. But probably what's really important is if you do let off fireworks, wait until they've cooled and then collect all the debris and the rubbish because that actually can cause quite a lot of harm to wildlife. And Sam, how can we be protecting our pets during the season. If you have cats and dogs that on the night when fireworks are going off you keep them somewhere that is safe and secure, close your windows, close the curtains, put some music on to try and muffle the sounds. The firework is loud for us, imagine what it's doing to a cat or a dog. So one of the things that we can do is actually plan ahead. If as an owner you know that your dog is frightened of fireworks, there is for example a treatment program called Sound Scary and this is a downloadable program that is available and over a period of time basically your dog learns not to respond to the sounds once your dog is not reacting to the sound, you then start to pair that with things that dogs really like. So like playing with toys, giving them chew toys, games, that sort of thing. So eventually what you'll have is a dog that instead of being frightened of fireworks, actually thinks that they're a very positive thing and means that something very pleasant is going to happen. Fireworks are as much a part of our awesome traditions as falling leaves or conkers, and it would be such a shame to lose them. But with a little bit of consideration, we can help make this time-honoured tradition enjoyable and safe for everyone. And who knows, you might even learn some chemistry along the way. Well, we do like to go out with a bang because that's the end of our autumn diary.